mom got was it you or how do you choose your worship songs because it's all about freedom and being free and this is the condition I'm going to talk about the condition of our heart of our soul and how to be free so father we praise you and we thank you lord thank you lord that we're in a prophetic church and we can hear your voice thank you lord that we yield our spirit to you and so father as we will be receiving the message that comes from your heart i pray that all the clutters in our minds in our hearts will be taken away and this is our prayer in jesus name amen lord okay the title of my teaching or preaching whatever is called how is your heart or how is your soul Hindi ko kinakausap yung mga makolesterol niyong puso. Ang aking ko kausapin. <laughs> okay. You know, salvation in Jesus Christ is our most priceless possession. Amen? And it is the most valuable treasure or gift that we can receive from God. Do I hear an amen? And we heard this and we read in Romans 6, 23. For the wage of, wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we're talking about salvation. It's the very, very first thing we need to have. We need to have our spirit regenerated, Jesus Christ in our hearts. Now ask your neighbor, what is the second best or the most valuable treasure after salvation? Anu sagot? Amen. You got it right. It's the Holy Spirit. And that's for me, He's the second most valuable treasure that I've ever received from the Lord. Because apart from Him, I don't know where I am. Because I, I really treasure every time He talks to me and shows me things. Amen. In fact, we love the Holy Spirit in this church. Amen. Amen. You know how we love Him? We always acknowledge His presence. Yesterday, we have our prophetic workshop and supernatural level one. And the first topic we always discuss in our workshop, number one topic, the first lesson is the Holy Spirit. We always want people to know the roles and responsibility of why the Holy Spirit is given to us and how does He work in our lives. Amen. We need to know this. This is a priority. Every believer of Christ need to know why we need His presence. Amen. Parang walang kausap. Amen. And so if you do not know the Holy Spirit, before you want to know the other people in the church, I want you to know Him first. Amen. And so in the workshop yesterday, I think we had 70 registrants and, and many, 72, and many uh, refresher. Tutuwa ako, nagre-refresh yung iba. You know, I, I, the presence of God was so good and so strong. And we were encouraged and we received prophetic words. And that's very, very important for all of us. Now, my teaching is about Isaiah 10, 27. And then I'm going to go to Proverbs 4, 23. And in Isaiah 10, 27, in the King James Version, And it shall come to pass in the day... That his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And in some versions, the anointing oil. This talks about Israel, but that's not my topic. Okay? But what I'm talking about is about the yoke. The yoke, what is a yoke? Is a choking device around the neck. It is like a harness around the neck of an ox or a bull. It is something that, you know, marks slavery, servitude. Can you show me a, a photo of a, an ox or a bull or whatever? And it speaks of slavery, bondage, burden, okay? And, and, and all this burden and load that the enemy can put upon us. Did you see that thing in the middle? That's the yoke. Pakisabi nyo, yoke. Okay. So, hindi ko alam sa Tagalog. I don't know what it is in Tagalog. Ha? Huh? Pamatok. Ay, nilalagay sa batok. Okay, okay. So, that's good. Alright? So, it is, it marks servitude. It marks slavery. It's a bondage. Hello? Alright. You know, Jesus Christ is the head of His church. And we, the church, is called the body of Christ. Amen. 
And, he, you know, the Lord wants to give us everything from his head. He wants to give his body and he wants to give it every nutrients. Remember the vine and the branches? Okay, I don't have time to discuss that. But from the head, he wants to give life to his body and it goes through the neck. Yeah. The neck. Hello. All right. So the body of Christ we know has many members, many ministries, many callings, different members, different parts. And all this, the body is connected to the head, Jesus Christ. Amen. And through the, your neck, it's like a pathway of life. Ayan nga, nilalagay dito. So if you are yoke, okay, whoever brings you somewhere, kalibawa, mas stronger the other one, it can carry you all the way. Okay, I just want to do some illustration later. Now, through the neck, where the head gives the nutrients to the body, if we cut off an arm, the body still lives, right? If we cut off a leg, the body continues to live. But if you cut off the neck, the body dies. Tama! Because this is life. All right. Now, Jesus, we know, is the life and source of everything. Right? So if you separate the body from the head, what happens to the body? It dies. The same way, apart from Jesus, we die. When a vine is taken away from the branch, or the branch taken away from the vine, we die. We wither. Tama? Because the source is in the vine. The branches need to remain attached, abiding in Him. In John 15 verses 4 to 6, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Tama ba? If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire. And they are burned. In other words, apart from the life-giving source, Jesus Christ, we are dead. That's why we need to remain in Him. We need to remain connected to the very source of life. When you read the scriptures, especially it's about the Old Testament, we always say, read it and we, all, we have seen something about neck. The Lord God, Yahweh, gets mad at the Israelites and He calls them what? Stiff-necked, right? Stiff neck, you stiff neck people. Because that's a, a term he was using. So, but when you hear the word neck or stiff neck, prophetically and symbolically, it, it talks about the free will. The free will of man. We have free will. Tama. So what is free will? Para maintindihan natin. It means free will is the ability to make decisions or choices that are not controlled by God. You have a choice, just like salvation. You chose Jesus, right? You have the free will. You could have said, no, I don't need him. Because he will not force himself. So you have a choice, and God, you chose Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, right? So free will is the ability to make cho choices that are not co controlled by God. So in the past, God often rebuked the Israelites for being stiff-necked. They were stubborn. They were arrogant. Mayabang. Okay? And so why stiff-necked? Because the Israelites followed the desires of their flesh instead of listening to God. So people who are prideful, who do not want to listen to the direction of the Holy Spirit or, by God, or God, are stiff-necked. Hello, it's not me. That's what it is. I'm just reading the word of God. Amen. And I believe as of now, many Christians are, and many believers are stiff-necked. Why? Because we follow our flesh. We follow our carnal desires instead of God's perfect plan and purposes for our lives. We do it on our own flesh. We want to obey our flesh. 
And sometimes, you know, uh, the enemy. We even hear the voice of the enemy. Church, if you are yoked with the stronghold of the enemy or Satan, we become choked. Kumbaga parang chino choke off ka sa free will mo. What is a stronghold? What is a stronghold? A stronghold is a fortress. It's a fortification, something very strong. So ikat na kaya nga stronghold, right? There's a hold in your life that is very strong and you cannot get away. Just like the yoke. The picture. You know that we showed you. So it is very strong. So spiritually, a stronghold is something that is in opposition to the will of God. You want to go this way, but this stronghold wants to control you. So it's always in opposition to the will of God. It could be your flesh. It could be something else. Satan, the devil, our enemy, the enemy of our soul, would always like to stop or and anything that is good in your lives. We know this in John 10.10, 10, right? And so he always will do that. He will stop you from going to the perfect direction God has planned for you. Okay, how many of you have experienced a stiff neck? Ansakit? Oh my goodness, I hope you don't experience it. When you have a stiff neck, you have... Soreness. You have this physical pain. Tama? And in this physical pain, it, it's so difficult to turn your head. Right? You want to go that way. Aray. Dahan, 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 dahan. Right? <laughs> it's so hard to turn your head to the direction you want to. To put your, you, you want to go. So you are only focused on the direction that is easy. Instead of going this way where it hurts, you want to go this way and you talk to the people this way. Oh, alam mo. <laughs> o diba? Ganon. Kasi hindi mo nga maikot, right? So that is a stiff neck. You want to go to the right way but you couldn't turn because you are yoked with a stronghold. Hello? Am I getting the... Are you getting the picture? So instead of you going to the course of God, to the pathway of life, this yoke that the enemy has put on you is controlling you. Right. Okay. Now, having the stiff neck is just like I'm explaining to you that you are yoked with the enemy. The same. And I'd like to use that as illustration with that picture that we have. Because the yoke on your neck, when you have a yoke on your neck and the partner you have on the other side is the enemy, you cannot go to the direction God wants for you. Instead, you go to the direction where the enemy wants you to go. Right? Now, talking about the narrow and difficult gate, as opposed to the, wow, the wide gate. When there is a path that God wants you to go. So for example, you have a stick neck. The enemy can take you to the easy way. And you want to follow because it doesn't hurt. Tama? But the sad thing is he's taking you to the easy way of destruction and you'll die. As opposed to the long and difficult and narrow gate where the Lord wants you to go. Do you get this? But you are still yoked. That's the sad part. And many Christians, and I'm praying right now for all of you to understand this. Many go to the easiest way that leads to destruction. Show me Matthew 7, 13 to 14. I want all of, God, all of us to get to that gate where the Lord wants to lead us. Enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in it. Why? Because nakayoke sila. That's the reason. 
Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Many of us would like to go the easiest way. We don't want to take the pain. We don't want. Because our flesh get burned. Our flesh hurts. Sana naintindihan to, Lord. Are we? Okay. We're going deeper. When you're yoked with the enemy, he's choking you. He's choking you. He's choking you of your free will. He's choking you and you cannot move. You cannot breathe. You are miserable. Hello? You are depressed. You are tormented. Because Satan wants you dead. That's what it says in John 10.10. 10. The thief is here to what? To steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full. Overflowing. And that's the reason he came here. To give you life and life abundantly. He, he came here to destroy the yoke of the enemy. He came here to destroy the works of the evil one. We read that, right? But then, why do we keep yoking with the enemy? You know, sometimes, I don't know. I feel like some Christians still voluntarily yoke themselves to the enemy. Many are yoked with bondages. Many are yoked with strongholds. Because when you're yoked with the enemy, you will, you will be stopped. You will end up nothing. You will end up dead. The enemy wants you to stop being productive members of the kingdom of God. He wants you to stop. He doesn't want you to bear fruit for his kingdom. And that's his goal. And that's the sad part. The truth is... If you have strongholds, if you are yoked now, saints, I'm talking to you. You are still in captivity. You are still in prison. And earlier we talked about being free. Freedom is in Jesus alone. Hallelujah. So you want to be free? Oh, wow. Focus your eyes on Jesus. Ask your neighbor, do you still have a stronghold? I hope voila. Are you yoked? That's why the Lord says us, examine our hearts every day. You know, nowadays, many are yoke. And some of them, they don't even know that they're yoke. Yeah. And that's the reason we have many depressed, miserable, some are committing suicide. And some people, what would they advise? The doctor will say, just medicate yourself. Hello? Tama? And some commit su suicide. Because many are tormented, tormented by the evil one. They didn't even know that they're yoke. Medication will not free you from tormentation, or tormenting spirits. Med medication will not free you from anything. It is Jesus alone who gives us freedom. Amen. Amen. And I hope all of us are understanding this. I will tell you this, watch out. Because the enemy can send you bad and wicked people. Yeah. Parang di kayo naniniwala. He wants you to be yoked with the evil one. He wants you to be yoked with bad and wicked people. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. In the NIV version, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Hello, so the enemy wants you dead or be yoked with an unbeliever who will lead you to death. And believe me, this is true. That's why the Bible warns us not to be yoked with unbeliever. Okay, don't get me wrong. Okay, when I'm talking about unbeliever, of course, there's a lot there. And there are good ones too who do not know Jesus. Amen. Our goal is to get them and bring them and have to the kingdom of God. But if the enemy sends you someone wicked, Jesus says this, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. No, I'm sorry, it's not Jesus. Why? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Why? Because you know what? When you are yoked with someone worldly, carnal, 
who does not love Jesus, you get dragged around by this person in his worldly ways and eventually you'll die. If you're not strong in the Lord, avoid. Believe me. If you're not strong in the Lord, either ikaw magdala sa kanya o siya dadaling kanya because you're a yoke. Right? Did you get this? All right. So you need to lead that person to Christ because the enemy will destroy you. That's his pur purpose, to kill you. Nothing else. He wants you dead. When you are yoked with someone who is evil and wicked, you get defiled. Do I hear an amen? amen? Why? If that person is wicked and evil, your heart will get defiled. You get it. You hear it. Defilement comes to you. Your heart starts to agree. You get defiled in your mind, in your will, in your emotion, which is your soul. And eventually, you'll get tormented. Tama? And then you suddenly, when you start to be defiled, spirits, tormenting spirits enter you. And you get the same kind of spirit that you are yoked with. That's why some people are sick. Some people do not understand what's happening. You get tormented by the spirits. Your heart now is defiled. Hello? Nananahimik. Am I getting across? Tama lang ba? Tormenting spirits. We read that in the Bible. They are tormented. Diba sinasabi natin? And Jesus heals them. Oh Lord, thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. So it's important that you always check your heart. Oh, when you are yoked with an unbeliever, a worldly one, you are compromising the integrity of your faith. Hello? That's why I'm asking you, check your heart. Are you strong enough to rebuke that person and lead that person to Christ? Dalawa lang yan, you're together. Either you go to the right or to the left. Whoever wins, doon ka papasok. Amen? And once you have a defilement in your heart, you will also defile others. Dama? And it spreads. Defilement spreads. It's like, when you read, like flies, if there is a sin... Pag may mabaho, nandyan lahat ang mga, hello? Langaw. Wow, ang gusto, gusto ko pag tumatahimik kayo. I know I'm doing well in teaching you. Tumatama sa puso. Thank you, Jesus. So what do you do? Pastora, I'm defiled with some, I'm, I'm yoked with someone who's an unbeliever. Well, then I'm not here to give you the counsel. I'm just preaching with what I read from the word. So you got to evaluate your heart. Amen. You ask God to intervene, give you godly counsel, go to your pastors, evaluate your heart, pray for the person. Okay? All right. Now, okay, we're talking unbelievers. How about believers? Yes, I want you to watch out too. Because even believers that you are yoked with can drag you to the wrong path. To the wrong course. Hello. Not every believer. That's why later after this teaching, you know, later, the later part of my teaching is about your heart. I'm just giving you a background. All right. So you need to understand the believers who are around you. Because the believers around you can also drag you to the wrong teaching. The wrong doctrine. Hello. Come on. All right. And how is this? He can drag you. So not everything that you hear is correct. You got to read the word of God, which is your very foundation. Amen. And you got to be around godly people who will lead you to Christ or not mess you up with some kind of teaching. How is this? Because you know why? Bakit nangyari pastora? Because you know why? Because believers, some believers are not listening to God. Instead, they are listening to, you know, teachings that are wrong. They are listening to their flesh as well. So they're, re 
listening to so many things that they, they get wrong feeding. And they give it to you. And then you also get defiled. Okay, I'm at, all right. Let's preach it. Hallelujah. That's why not all advices are good. Sometimes you get wrong advices. You get wrong counsels. Amen. And so that's why it's so important, important that you know who you're listening to. Tell your neighbor, listen to the Holy Spirit. Yan ang tamang tama. Yan ang totoo sa lahat. Amen? Amen. You know, it is imperative. I want you to listen, church, that you examine your heart, everyone. Examine your heart if you are yoked or in bondage to anything, oops, or anyone. What is your bondage? What is the stronghold in your life? I can name many. Pornography, hello, lust, greed, money. Okay, maganyanan, okay? <laughs> In John eight thirty six, therefore the Son makes you free, then you shall be free indeed. Amen. Ask God to set you free from these bondages. Amen. He's the only one. Jesus is the only one that can set you free from the yoke of the enemy. Amen. Matthew 11, 28, 30, 30 sorry, said, Jesus said, Come to me, all who you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Wow. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is very different from the yoke of the enemy, huh? Kasi sabi, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why did Jesus say this? You know why? Because if we submit our will, if we yield our free will, to the, bond, to the dictate or control of the enemy, then instead of listening to God's instruction, then we set ourselves for failures. We set ourselves for defeat and eventually death. Right? Jesus knows that the enemy is here to oppress you, to deceive you, to devour you. First Peter 5 verse 8. The Amplified ver Version says, Be sober, be alert, and cautious at all times. The enemy, of, that enemy of yours, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. This is in the Amplified. In other words, it says seeking someone to devour. In other words, the devil could not devour anyone or everyone, sorry. But he is seeking for someone na kaya niyang lapain. He is seeking for someone who's an easy prey. That he could devour, he could eat you, or first fully, you know, mongol you, or kung ano kainin ka niya. Now look at your neighbor, sabi mo, sana hindi ikaw. <laughs> sana hindi ikaw. Are you an easy prey? I hope not. Amen? Sabi dito, be sober. Sober. Have you seen someone drunk? Yeah. Or have you been drunk? <laughs> Whatever. Okay. If you've seen someone drunk, literally, a person who's drunk could not walk straight. Could not think straight. Tama? I remember we were in Japan. Kamini Bishop, after we were walking, going back to the condo where we were staying. And then there were this Japanese man. Upa surai surai talaga ang ganyang talaga. Manman and dito left right left right. Sabi namin, wow, talagang lasing, drunk, right? And so when someone is drunk, he is off balanced. He loe, right? And so he could not think straight, could not walk straight, off balance, and uh, in other words, out of direction. So I assure you. When the enemy gets near you, there was a portion in your life, a time in your life that you got off balance. The word of God says earlier, be alert. Be aware at all times. Right? 
So this is so important. Going back to Matthew 8, 11, 28, Jesus said, come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Are you weary? Are you burdened? Wow, then come to Jesus. He's inviting you to come. Later, maybe in our altar call, just come. Amen? Jesus is the lover of your soul. So he says, take my yoke. Come, follow me. Okay? Take my yoke upon you. Jesus is inviting us to have an open, free fellowship, loyal to each other. Have a good relationship with the king. Amen. He's inviting all of us. And if you're a guest today and you don't have this relationship with Jesus, I invite you. Amen. So this is so important. He says, learn from me. Follow me as my disciple. Jesus is saying, I want to disciple you. Follow me. Learn from me. Amen. So he's telling us. Now the question is, how do we learn from Jesus? How do we learn from him? Easy lang. Do you read your Bible every day? You got to study His Word. You need to meditate in it. Listen to His Word. Listen to Him. Talk to Him. See how He did. You know, sometimes, you know, I put myself like an out. When I read the Bible, I look at, you know, I see. Ano bang ginagawa ni Lord? In that situation, I study what He's doing. And that's the way I meditate on the works of the Lord. I take myself and get outside from the box or the reading and I look at it and how is it, you know, how is he doing it? And that's the way I learn from him. Because you know why? He is our role model. Amen. Amen? You need to study his lifestyle. If he did not do it, don't do it. If he did it, do it. Amen? And you know that river of God, pastors and leaders, you know what I'm saying? Because I tell you when something is wrong and I correct. And so I don't have the answer for everything, but I know and I listen to the Lord. And so if Jesus did it, I'll do it. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right, sabi niya. What is his yoke? Okay. His yoke is light. His yoke is always full of love. His yoke is always... Full of peace and life. Amen? Kaya mga masarap to eh. Wow, thank you Lord. I want to be yoked with Jesus than the enemy. Because he says it's light. Amen? And I will give you rest. I will give you what refreshment for your soul. Amen. So when you are yoked with Jesus, he gives you rest. You will have refreshment for your soul. There's a renewal that happens within you. Amen? That's why it's so important that you need to be yoked with the Lord. There's refreshment for your soul. Now, as a believer of Jesus Christ, I believe the important part of your life right now, as a believer, una lagi nating sinasabi, we want to be Christ-like. But now, and I believe that you are a believer in Jesus Christ, I know God wants you to refresh your soul. What is important to a new believer in Jesus Christ is the condition of your soul. God loves your heart. God loves your soul. And if you want to change, you have to examine your heart or your soul. See, the Bible uses heart or soul interchangeably. That's why when you read the word of God, it says heart and sometimes soul. And so you can use that. And this is me. I don't know if you will agree. Because when I read a word and I ask the Lord, I believe there are three hearts. One, the heart of your physical body, which is the organ, the physical heart. The second thing, I believe, is the heart of your soul. And your soul, that's where your mind, your will, and your emotion, your feelings. Your mind has the intellect. And that's in your soul. And the third one is the heart of your inner man. You are now a new creation. And in your innermost, in your inner man, in your new spirit, that's where the Holy Spirit resides. 
That's why when you're studying the word, when you're reading the word, nakokonfuse, bakit may heart, may soul, mga ganon, alright? So simply, I would say, I use the word heart and soul interchangeably, just like what I read in the Bible. Proverbs 4, 23 says, Guard your heart. Watch your heart. This is what it is. For out from it flows the wellspring of life. In your soul is where your mind, your will, and emotion reside. So if your soul is yoked, your soul, remember, mind, will, and emotion, is yoked with Jesus, surely I guarantee you, you will have rest, you will have peace, you will have joy and life everlasting. And I believe you will always have victory because you are yoked with the King of Kings. Amen. Now, if you want to be victorious, you want to behave, live a life of joy and peace, you need and you must have, one, deep intimacy with God. Number two, you anchor your life and your faith in Jesus, not on any man, but on Jesus. You live in righteousness, have a blameless life. Amen? Submit willingly to the leading of the Holy Spirit, not man. Amen? Obey the laws or the commands of the kingdom of God. Church, yoking with the world is death. But yoking with Jesus is life and life abundantly. Amen? And I want you to understand, when I say life and life abundantly, that is now. Here on earth, it's not something in the future. It's some, yes, we will have that eternity with the Lord. But right now, you can be blessed. Amen? You can have a good life. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. This is in the New Kings, uh, New King James Version. Out of it, if your heart is yielded to the Lord, everything will just fall in their proper places. It says here we are to guard, we are to protect, we have to watch for our heart. Amen. With all diligence, now carefully, you gotta watch your emotion. Amen? You need to have this control. You need to do you watch what you're thinking. Every issues of your life. Okay? Every decision you make. Every choices you make. This comes from the inner depths of your heart. Everything you do. Everything originates. Your decision originates from the inner modes of your soul. Yeah? Kaya nga sabi ng salita, after, that's why out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Because what's in your heart, that's what it will become. That's why when you are making a decision, and you chose that decision, yan ang mangyayari. After you make a decision, a corresponding action happens. And that action comes from your heart. From your soul. Tanungin mo, katabi mo, what's in your heart now? Tumatahimik. Because that's the reality. I'm just telling you because God loves our soul. He loves us so much that we have to examine our soul. Every facet, every part of you, every character that you are right now, and everything that is flowing, okay, right now, be it's good or bad, everything that is happening right now is the product of the true condition of your heart. Do you understand this? That's why choices is important. What you are right now is the product of your decision. Aya ka ganyan ngayon, you chose that. But it's not late. That's what I'm trying to say. You have free will. And that's why it's so important that you have to think, check your heart. Amen? Look at Luke 6, 4, 45. Luke 6. Okay? Are you understanding this? Let's go a bit deeper and understand more of the Word of God. Give me more time, okay? After all, it's 20 minutes after. Nang binigay sa akin ang mic. All right. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth 
evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So whatever is in your heart, that's what is going to come out. Every action you do is also coming from your decision, from your heart. So it's just like the saying, a, a tree is known by its fruit. Ama? If it's a good tree, it will have good fruit. The same thing, just like, you know, what we read. You know, conditions of the heart is so important. In the Bible, there's so many examples, but because I don't have any more time, I cannot expound. And I'll simplify the condition of the heart of Joseph versus the condition of the heart of Ananias and Sapphira. You know what happened? Joseph knew that one day he saw in a vision that he will be a ruler. Even though from a favorite son of Jacob, he came, you know, he became lowly as a servant. He was in prison for the things he didn't do. Hello? But he remained faithful to God. He guarded his heart with diligently. He submitted to the ward and to the head of the prison. He never said or did anything wrong because he was after God. Hello, are you understanding this? So Joseph was a man after God's character. Even in the lowest point of his life, he did not change. And so he kept his heart pure. Amen? He kept his heart pure. He kept his soul pure until Joseph reached his destiny as a ruler. Hello? As a ruler of a nation. What he saw in the vision became a reality. Amen? So it's so important when God talks to you in a vision, I want you to understand vision are realities. It's more real than what you see in the physical. When God shows it to you, I want you to claim it. And believe it. Amen. Because believing is possessing it. Amen. As opposed to Ananias and Sapphira. We know this Ananias. Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5. I don't have time to discuss about it. But I know you believe. You know, you know the story, right? So Ananias and Sapphira, Sapphira were truly born again leaders. No. They were truly born again because they were with the disciples. With the apostles. But something happened. They lied to the Holy Spirit. They hid the money. So you could see the heart motive. Greed and corruption and defilement in the heart. Destroyed them. Killed them. So because of their hearts were impured. You're impure. So what happened? They, de they died. Amen. So I believe the rise and fall of every believer. Every child of God. Depends upon the inward workings of your heart. Amen. So that's why I always will say, check your heart. Some people have witnesses, personal character. You know, that's why I want you to understand you need to check your heart if there is any defilement in your soul. Hello. Thank you, darling. I heard you. Because you know what? Even if you have a strong anointing, even your anointed man and minister of God, you can have a downfall if your heart is not right with God. Yeah. How many have we heard? A lot. There are so many ministers of God. You know, Jimmy Swaggart, Jim Baker. I don't know. There are so many who fell because they were. It's not about the anointing that gave them failure. It's our, those are the inner recesses of their hearts, the secret dark places in their hearts. May itinata bisila. Only God can see that. Now, I want you to understand, we all want to reach the fullness. We want to reach our destinies. We want to finish our calling. We want to finish the race. So if that is it, you have to examine your hearts daily. Amen? The Holy Spirit speaks. He convicts you. Tama? Minsan ka iniisip mo pa lang. Hello, hindi mo na magawa. Okay. That's why every motives, everything, every decision comes and originates from the heart. So ask your neighbor, kumusta ang kondisyon ng puso mo? Give me 10 more minutes. And I'm going to finish this. Minamandali ko na. Look. Look. 
I want you to understand. Luke 6, 45, kagan. Luke 6, kanina. A good man out of the good treasure. I'm going to finish here. A good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. The Lord, every time I do my sermon or every time the Lord changes my sermon, thank you God. He shows me a vision why. Our heart or our soul is like a treasury. It's like a treasury. Binasa natin dyan, treasure. So the treasure that you have in your heart can be good treasures or bad treasures. Tama? Now, some people have bad treasures. They fill their hearts with wickedness, corruption, vileness, anger, bitterness, and so, so, so. And some have good hearts. So the question is, when I saw this picture, have you seen a bank with a vault? Yeah. All right, so you've seen a bank uh, and a vault, right? Inside, you could see many safety deposit boxes, right? So this is what the Lord showed me. People rent these boxes to keep their treasures. Jewelries, titles of their houses, lands, documents, right? Important documents. Those things are treasures. But some people also put bad stuff there. Could be a document against someone. It could be some stuff that you don't want to show people. All right? So our hearts like that. Are you getting this? So our soul is like a treasury of different things. No matter what's in there, because God loves your soul, and God, even there's wickedness right now in the heart, God wants your soul to be a treasury of His goodness, of His life, of His power, hello, and glory. Amen. And that's why He gave you the Holy Spirit to help you. But you need to examine and surrender it to God. Our soul is like a vault where there are boxes, storages, either good or evil treasure. It's still your choice. It's a free will decision. Amen? That's, that's why I always say examine your heart to know what is, in the tre what is in your treasury. The word of God says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so you have to ask the Holy Spirit to show and expose your heart. Amen? And find out what needs to be thrown away or what needs to be strengthened. Hello? We read that. David, King David always say, Strengthen me, Lord. Psalm, I can't remember. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. I don't have in the treasure. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. I mean, your soul needs to be strengthened. And even David said that in Psalm 42, I think. And he said, why are you downcast, O my soul? Diba? Our soul needs to be checked. Our souls need to be strengthened. And that's the reason we need to submit ourselves to the strengthening of the Holy Spirit. Right now in this room, there are so many weak hearts right now that need strengthening. The Lord gave me this word. And some hearts are hardened. We read in the Bible, the Pharaoh hardened his heart many times kahit maraming problema or plagues sa pinadala but Pharaoh hardened his heart we have divorces we have annulment because one chose to harden his heart or her heart when you harden your heart you're defiled you need to submit that to the Holy Spirit our soul and I believe just like anyone. Our soul gets beaten up by the enemy every day. Tama? Because there are so many things that the enemy sends our way. Even our environment. Even the activities we do every day. We get beaten up. There's so much. We, get, we suffer. Our soul suffers. It gets defiled. 
But praise the Lord. That's why we need to understand the working of the Holy Spirit who redeems and cleanses the soul. But if you don't pray, you don't submit yourself, what will happen? God wants the wholeness of your soul. And I'm about to finish. We always say this in Matthew 27, 37. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. It's all about our soul. Jesus is the lover of our soul. It's all about our heart. We read and we hear many are teaching about prosperity. Many are talking about prophetic. Many are talking about so many different things. Our goal is not to be rich here on earth, but to be like Jesus. He loves our soul. And I'm going to end with this story yesterday in our prophetic there was a lady and this lady during the worship time she was dancing in the spirit but the movements were not graceful and she was shouting during the time of worship and I think it was Mikey who was assisting me and the Lord said to me, go to her. I was not about to lay hands. And when I looked at her, she was shouting. And the Lord says, listen. And I listened. And there were two voices I hear. The shouting. And there was a shrieking inside. And there was this cry for help inside. And the Lord said to me, it's in her soul. And I said, Lord, how will I help her? So the Lord says, be kind to her because she's in pain. So I went to her and I said, and I heard the word past. I don't care about your past. And the Lord says, tell her that I love her. And I said, I know she was shouting loud. She was the loudest. And she said, I said to her, the Lord told me you have pain of the past. And I see tears. But she was shouting. And I said, the Lord wants to heal your soul. Wants to heal your heart. And suddenly she stopped shouting. And that morning inside her, she started to burst with joy. And she started to laugh. And joy came after the morning. The Lord loves our soul. He loves our heart. Amen. Gusto tayong lahat baguhin ni Lord. And if you're willing to surrender, Matthew 5 verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And if you want, you know, I know it's hard. God does not require perfection. He doesn't ask you to be perfect. But He requires a perfected and pure heart. Come to the altar. Let's all stand up. If you want to surrender, it's a choice. You want to give a free will, free will, surrender your free will to God. It's a choice. Thank you. your soul, your heart to be surrendered to the Lord. It's time. If this soul that you have right now is controlling you and your yoke with the enemy or a sin and it leads you to destruction. Surrender not in Ken Lord. If there is any bondages and you cannot move forward because kahit maliit na anger or bitterness, that's still a sin. And God wants you to be free. God wants you 
to have a pure heart. Amen? As the worship lead, leads us, go ahead. Pray for you. If you want your healing right now, a healing of your soul, just come. You want to be free. You want to be free. Ushers.
Hallelujah. If you're believing the Lord for healing, if you're believing the Lord for healing, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, right now, there is healing by the blood of the Lamb. Come. 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 He is our healer. Believing God for a miracle. Come. He is our healer. By the blood of the Lamb, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, raise up your hands if you need healing. Receive your healing now. If you uh, want to represent someone, it's okay. Healing by the blood of the Lamb, by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Receive your healing. Healing come. By the stripes of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Receive healing. Healing in Jesus' name. Something is wrong with your knees. The Lord is he healing your knees right now. Knees are being healed. You have something wrong with your knees. The Lord is healing your knees right now. Receive your healing. Knees. By the blood of the Lamb, by the stripes of Jesus. Your knees are being healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I see uh, on the left side here, uh, I don't know if it's kidneys or, or liver operation. Right now, God is operating on your kidneys or liver in this area right now. You have liver problems, kidney problems right now. The Lord is supernaturally operating on your kidneys on your liver right now hallelujah receive your healing receive your healing receive your healing I believe you're my healer I wrong with your left eye your left eyes the Lord is healing your left eye right now the Lord is healing your your left eye right now receive your healing be healed in Jesus name receive your healing I believe
receive your miracle today. He is a miracle working God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Oh. A miracle can happen now. For the Spirit of the Lord. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The Lord is not done yet with your healing. Receive your miracle. wrong with your neck God is healing you have neck pain right now God is healing your neck pain right now the Lord is healing the evidence is all around hallelujah dominion belongs in Jesus name if, if you if you um, anyone do, do you feel that God has done something right now to you has he healed anyone don't be afraid to come up here don't be afraid because I believe that the Lord has healed some some people here so if the Lord has healed you come short testimony come Anyone? Anyone? Come, come, come. Short testimony, short lang. Hi. Hi, everyone. So, um, this morning when I woke up, um, my throat really hurts. And uh, I, I think that I was about to come down with a cold, and I don't know, or a flu. And then um, I was praying to the Lord that I would be at church today. I want to sing for him. And I want him to hear my voice as I praise him today. So I, I kept on praying all throughout the day that I was doing my chores for my kids. Um, I was praying, please, Lord, heal my throat. I want to sing. I want to sing. And when I was called for the altar call, I, I began singing. Um, I believe. You're my healer. And I felt, I felt my voice came back. And, and I was able to sing my favorite song from Carrie Job. Thank you so much today. Thank you. 
Is the Lord healed any any knee pains? I'm believing God has healed. So, yung iba sa inyo na nahihiya kayo pagkatapos uh, somebody, they, they, they all come to me, I got healed and all that. And this is an opportunity to be able to give glory to the Lord. Don't be, don't be shy. I'm believing that the Lord has healed. Oh, here you go. Kasi po yung tito ko po nasa, nandyan po siya sa kainta ngayon, galing po siya ng, ng Bindoro. Tapos magkakaroon po siya ng kidney operation po. Pero ngay- ito pong Sunday, pupuntahan po namin para ipag-pray. Tap- pero yung ngayon pa lang po, kiniklaim ko na po yung sinabi ni Bishop kanina na yung operation sa kidney yun po. Amen. Now, I, I know some of you are shy, but anyway, next week, kasi mamaya yan, may lalapit na naman. Ako nahihi. Ang daming ganyan. Alam na alam ko eh. But anyway, I don't want to force you. Amen? Just give the glory to the Lord. Um, you know, uh, this year the Lord has really told us to, to, in our revivals, don't just do revivals. We need to do crusades at the same time, which is the evangelistic, you know, messages to bring people to the Lord. Amen? And do it all over. So, We're organizing a big one for the body of Christ uh, sa Marinduque. Revival at the same time, crusade, preaching the gospel. So we're organizing many, many of this all over our nation. The beginning will be in Marinduque. And many. Marinduque is the heart of the Philippines. So it's very prophetic. And many other places where... But so uh, this offering will go to the mission field to preach the gospel. So come, let's be generous. This will go to the preaching of the gospel over all over this nation and the nations. And the nations. So let's, let's preach the gospel together and advance the kingdom of God. Don't just give, let's be generous. Lord is returning to raise up the offering to the Lord. Lord, here is our offering for the furtherance of your kingdom. Receive it up in heaven for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up. Raise up your hands to heaven. In, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every hand raised, let it touch the throne of God and let the river flow from the throne of God to your hands to your hearts to your families to your ministries to everyone that you will encounter and let heaven touch earth today hallelujah I declare and decree open heavens upon you breakthrough 2020 amen Hallelujah. God bless you. Prophetic painting. <laughs> Prophetic painting. Nakalimutan ko. Let the river touch you right now. This. Oh, this. My, my, my declaration is exactly this. I explain pa to? I just declared heaven touching earth right now. Hallelujah! Let's go. Hallelujah. Where's that girl that came up here for the testimony? Where are you? Where are you? Huh? CR? Okay. Let her be filled in the CR. There, there she goes. Hallelujah. That's for you. Sakatababaka, takarababaka, takarabasha, takatababaka, takarababaka. Ove!
Happy birthday.